guys and welcome back. I'm Sarah from Ugly Duckling House and today I've got a new Ruby update for you. As of the last video, we now have the camper much closer to home, so that's made things a lot easier with making more progress. This time around, we took it home to my house for the very first time and used a pressure washer to clean it and get it ready for polishing. Big thank you to Zep for sponsoring this video and providing the all-in-one pressure wash cleaner that we needed to pressure wash the camper. In episode three, there was a lot of chaos with trying to get Ruby hooked up and towed out of the woods. Since then, we've had a little more practice at lining up the hitch, and I'm still learning a lot of the new vocabulary. The process, in case you're curious, pretty much goes exactly as you see here. We have to jack up the tongue, back the ball up exactly in line with the coupler, lower the tongue down, lock it in place, and harness it safely. By the way, we'll be covering the replacement of that rusted tongue jack in episode 5 so that we don't have to use the car jack anymore. We're also still relying on the same brake lights from the last episode. They're really easy to hook up to a truck, but the wires are so long that we have to get creative to keep them from dragging. Yeah, this is uh, not a permanent solution, obviously. While our previous hand washing was successful and got off more than 30 years of grime, the trailer still has some obvious streaking from the last attempt. We also took a little time to re-inspect the camper now that we aren't under as much of a time constraint and took mental notes of things to fix in the future. because it looks like there might be screw marks right here. I think that's one. Yeah. For the pressure wash, we used Zep All-in-One Pressure Washing Cleaner and our steel RB200 pressure washer and hooked up all the hoses first. The black nozzle sprays wider than the others at low pressure, which is ideal for soap application. There's a clear tube that runs through the machine for soap. When used like this, the soap doesn't need to be further diluted, so we were able to simply point and spray. Not having to dilute the soap like that means that the job is that much faster and easier, so I consider that a big plus since we don't need much other than the pressure washer and the soap. Also, the pressure washer needs water flowing through it every minute or two to protect the motor. So eliminating another thing to keep track of is perfect. Day one wasn't really about anything other than getting used to doing this new task that I'm sure we'll have to do more than once again in the future. Because honestly, I expected it to be more complicated than it is. To apply the soap, you just spray down large sections at a time and wait five minutes for it to do its thing and then you switch to a higher pressure nozzle and rinse away the dirt and soap. And that's really it. That's all you have to do, which is a lot faster than we were expecting. Seeing as how things were going very smoothly, we went ahead and did some test spots of some aluminum polish. We figured best case scenario that we might get some of the rust spot out, but we were in for another surprise. Just a little bit like that, that's right? That's good, yeah. Okay. And the black is normal. The black is supposed to be there. Okay. And then once you see the black, get a clean side. Alright. Start wiping. Start, yeah, polishing. That's so cool. Look at that, honey. No. I did not think we were going to get these kinds of results. Not that easily. No. It's got to be harder than that, right? I guess not. I mean, there's still imperfections, but... Yeah, but I mean... From... Look at that. You can actually see my finger. Right. You can actually see my finger in the camera... in the camper now. What are you doing? I can see my reflection. <laughs> Finally. Oh, that's reflection. crazy. No reflection. We quickly found that not all the products we bought were designed to polish uncoated aluminum, so we wound up only using two to compare. Both worked about the same, and I'll cover this in much greater detail in episode 6.
Kyle's parents had boxed up a number of things to give to him and had left them in the camper for us. A few toys and some old tools, including Kyle's dad's electric polisher. We wanted to find it and give it a test run before the end of the weekend. What's this? This was my Hot Wheels travel container. Hot Wheels, huh? Yeah. Die cast. Wait, it should be. All right. So, which one's your favorite? Oh, I don't remember. It's I never been played so with. I never played with these as a kid. This is 1977. Clearly, I played with them a lot. They're not in the best shape. <laughs> They're toys. They're meant to be played with. This is not a Hot Wheels. Clearly. I know that some of those are collectibles, but still. Not in this condition. No. This is played. They are well loved. Well loved. That's a good way of putting it. Yeah. <laughs> Jumping all over the place in the camera view, by the way, babe. <laughs> Hard I'm to keep up. It has a little track. See? Oh, wait. Move that. Move that down, so I can see it. It's got a little track. Cute. I should take it to Pawn Stars. <laughs> <laughs> We've been watching a lot of Pawn Stars lately. That's a keep. Guess what we're doing all night tonight. That's, that's a keep. So all that's old Black & Decker stuff. Yep. Okay then. That is an old school polisher. Yep. It still works though. Yes. Yep. That's all that matters to me. Right. Yeah. The next day we got started again on pressure washing. Since the roof was still the grimiest, Kyle took care of that first to make sure any remaining dirt would be washed down and off the sides by the time we were done. Again, the process is a simple five minute soak with low pressure application and then rinse with a higher pressure. We found that the tube needed a little weight on the end though to sit at the bottom of the soap bottle. We also put the tube into a container of clean water to remove any residual soap from the machine. We did try out the old polisher, but the bonnet wasn't really as effective as buffing by hand, and we didn't have any new ones to fit it with. So we decided to press on and give hand polishing one entire panel a try to see how it would look. This is a serious arm workout, so we only did this one panel by hand this one time. We wound up using battery powered polishers for the rest, which you'll see in episode 6. This is just a sneak peek. While we still anticipate a more lengthy process down the road to get all of the scratches and damage out, we're still very pleased with the results so far. I think that we made the right choice to do a pressure wash before we tried polishing too. It was pretty clear from the roof alone that our hand wash earlier this year was effective, but that extra step meant we knew for sure that our surface was clean and ready. Next up from this, we can then focus on replacing the tongue jack and a dramatic polishing before and after, which I can't wait to share.